Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about episode three of Hit and Run. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're picking up with Sigev entering the U.S. Obviously, I love the whole thing of like, yo, Ron, you say you're going to pick me up. He's like, no, it's New York. Ah, just blah, 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 blah. It's like, the thing, I guess like either Ron was just kind of like, it is New York. So like, who like comes to pick someone up? It's like, no, nah, get like a taxi or take the train or do something. There's total many modes of transportation to get you to my place but Ron's kind of living in a rundown place and I even love when Segev does get there he's like are you sick and he's like what no I'm not sick because he's like, I see all those pills in there he's like oh it must have belonged to the people who owned it previously it's like I guess he's not letting Segev know like oh he's kind of on rough times in a sense that like well we saw last episode his whole thing is selling drugs so I guess like Segev doesn't know about like because it seems like he's kind of in a complicated situation too because Segev asked about, I, I believe, one of his kids, I believe. And he was like, no, no, good, good, good. Because, like, uh, Ron had just asked, like, oh, how is Ellen? It's like, I think she's doing good. And I think he had asked about one of uh, Ron's kids. He's like, oh, yeah, good. And he kind of quickly changes the subject afterwards. He was kind of like, yeah, 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 they're good. So I'm like, I guess things aren't copacetic on that front. So, uh, but obviously they went to go see the cops. Because Ron was like, yeah, the only way you're going to go be able to visit those dudes who are in jail is if you are family or you're a lawyer. And it's like, yeah, I would know it was like that the last time I was in. So I was like, when the last time was, when was the last time you were in jail? Um, Ron, is, is there a story behind that? Um, but he ends up going to see the cops, but they ended up re releasing the guys. And it's like, wait, how could they get released? It's like, how, do, how are you so sure that they're not here? It's like, oh, because they got released two hours ago. These guys, m like, murdered my wife and you released them. And that cop's got, like, this smirk on his face. Like, <laughs> like I, I think it's just kind of, like, in his, I don't know. You can't help but interpret, like, yeah, sure, whatever, dude. Because it's like, because he's a foreigner. I think that's where it kind of comes into play. Like, it just, it seemed like super not, like, the guy's telling you these men murdered his wife wife and you're just not giving him any help at all what was really interesting though is that who he ended up turning to was naomi uh played by miss lathan which i knew she was in the show because of the trailer i did only watch the trailer once but i was under the impression like she was a cop but i don't know if that was kind of like a byproduct of like knowing that she has played at least at least played a cop at least once that i'm aware of in that show shot shots fired so i don't know if like maybe i just like I said, it's been a while since I saw the trailer and watched it once, but I was under the impression like she was like an American cop or something like that. But it seems like in actuality, she's a journalist. And her and Segev have like history. Now, what that history of, it doesn't sound like just friends. It sounds like more than that, because especially the way her like Naomi's husband was asking him later on. It's like, oh, it sounds like just more than a friend. Like, it seemed like there might be history between the two of them. Um, cause it's like, oh yeah, like I tried to call you a year ago about something, but he's like, yeah, I was kind of getting married at the time. She's like, all right, that's a good enough excuse. But it's like, he wants her help because she's very good at digging up stuff and he's trying to find Isaac. And we get a little bit more of the history between him and Isaac. It's like me and Isaac and Ron, like we actually worked underneath him, uh, in, uh, Mexico. She's like, oh, when you were mercenaries, he's like, no, we trained, uh, tr uh, Mexican troops on how to fight the cartel and she's like was that is that really any different so it was like it definitely seemed like the way they talked about it like last episode about his like time in mexico it sounded like some super off the books like pri private work but it's like yeah there was specifically mercenaries and it turns out in fact he's actually the one he actually said he framed um Isaac, so that's why Isaac hates, it's like, oh, I didn't just take the fall for it, you basically framed me to take the fall for it, because Isaac was their boss, and he was doing some very nasty stuff that they just couldn't deal with anymore, so, um, Segev ended up taking him down, so he figured that that's what this is all about, because he was, he's been in prison for like nine years because of Segev, so of course he's going to hold a grudge the entire time. And the thing is, Segev wants a lot more results. And because, like, for one, Naomi doesn't want to get involved because this is, like, some, like, connected to some heinous stuff. And it's, like, mixed up in this type of thing. It's, like, I don't want to get mixed up in that. I wish I could help you, Segev, but I got, like, a lot on my own plate. But regardless of anything, she still looks into it later on. There's even, like, Ron not having the connections that Segev was kind of hoping. Because Ron's trying to tell him, it's, like, Amer it's America. Like, things don't run the way we're used to them running. Um, kind of implying, like... 
we used to be able to kind of be able to do what we want to because I guess it's like maybe different countries. A lot of the stuff we do definitely is kind of a big no-no anywhere we've ever been, but also like we're probably less likely to get away with it here in the U.S. It seems like that might be what he's kind of implying, so... It is, because uh, even Naomi was saying, like, yeah, you're not in special forces anymore, because it's kind of like, you kind of have, because it's like, right, you're going after Isaac, because she's like, this dude is mixed up in a lot of shady stuff. It's like, I knew he, I wasn't thinking he was a good guy, but he's an extremely bad guy. You're not special forces. You don't have, like, 40 people that are going to back you up. And it's like, all you have, you don't have anyone. And he, Ron's like, he has me. It's like, yes, you have your best friend who's wearing an apron right now. That's all you have. And, but Naomi doesn't want to know anymore. She, she, she knows of his tendencies of like yeah like she's like i saw you beat the crap out of dude just because he said the wrong thing so it definitely implies like more that naomi him definitely have a history especially the way her husband was talking about it like he kind of figured that there was more to it because it's like yeah this is one guy like yeah you met him like seven or eight years ago but it seemed like their connection runs deeper than just someone you casually entered your husband met like once like eight, seven or eight years ago it's it's a whole thing but I'm really curious, like, what their history is. There's also the element of him coming to New York. Uh, I guess it acted as, like, a double thing of, like, right, he's coming to New York to visit Isaac. Well, not visit Isaac, to track Isaac down, but also there's the whole situation with uh, the Wexlers and the little memorial they're um, holding for Danielle. So, I guess... He was able to use that as an excuse of, I'm going to be in town, New York, for that. But mainly, my main, main objective is to uh, track down Isaac. And um, I think that's another misinterpretation I had, too, of what that family dynamic is. I was under the impression, like, Martin and his wife were Daniel's family in the sense of, like, I thought, like, maybe Martin was, like, the brother-in-law or something like that. But it's like, no, I think that's her parents' I could be mistaken. Like, it just the way he says later on, our girl, made it sound like, oh, like he's saying, like, well, yes, our girl in the sense that, yeah, you were her husband and this is, uh, this was our, like, but it sounded like kind of like an our daughter thing. So, I think that's her, like I said, I could be uh, completely wrong about that. Either way, for now, we're just saying the family situation. We'll just refer to the Wexlers as family. We won't really go into whether or not that's, like, actually, like, her father and mom. I thought it was interesting when, um, and I guess that should have been like the key sign there immediately. When, I, like I said, I was already super suspicious of Martin last episode being like, oh yeah, like Marsha, she uh, got pneumonia. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Like it just seemed like some last minute excuses not to show up there. And so at first I was wondering, like, is Martin up to some shady stuff? But then immediately when she was like, oh, yeah, like, uh, like the pneumonia, oh, like, the doctor said it was a lot lighter than people, the doctors initially thought. And I was like, okay, so maybe there was some truth to it. But the fact is, it seemed like, but then it's like, maybe she's, and, well, with stuff that comes up later on, it's like, oh, she's definitely a part of the lie. But then, like, now the question then becomes, well, what actually is the lie? Because it was interesting because Ron was like, it, he was meant to be like, he was trying to make some common ground of like, oh, you had pneumonia. He's like, oh, yeah, a neighbor of mine. I mean, not where I currently live, but the, where I used to live had pneumonia for a very long, 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 long time. And he died. And I was like, OK, Ron. And just like Segev is looking at him like, why the hell are you telling that story here? And it's because I thought Ron was trying to be personable. He was trying to like talk and just it seems like he's just an awkward human being. He's like, no, I'm going to go get me something to drink. But but it also made me think, at first I was like, is Ron saying that? Because he's like, oh, you look like you're in perfect health to have had pneumonia. Because it doesn't seem like that was like a, oh man, it seemed like that passed pretty quickly. It seemed like that's what he was kind of referring to. But I guess, it, you know, like I said, he was just trying to make conversation. But it does beg the question. It's like, oh, like, but she was able to swift it away by being like, oh, it was just lighter, lighter than uh, they initially thought it was. But... They even had that. It's like, oh, here's a picture of the family. Like, oh, you, Ella, and Danny. Oh, let's put this away. And they, she puts it in a drawer. Because even, even Sega kind of looked at it like, oh, you're not going to put it upstairs or something. You put it in a drawer. And that's, or at the very least, you could, like, leave it out. Like, it's almost like you're ashamed to, like, like what was that about? So, I don't know. But uh, thanks to, well, it was mainly uh, Ron's work. Because he ends up finding out about, like, the, one of the places that Isaac owned is like a, a club. And so Ron ended up contacting a quote unquote friend uh, named Benny 
he's a quote unquote, like I said, quote unquote friend of Isaac's. And it's like, oh, Benny, 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 like you should know better than anyone. Like the Internet's not the safest place because it's that thing of like a more modern thing of like, oh, yeah, people put a lot of stuff on the Internet, like social media and stuff like that. You're putting your position out there, like letting people know where you are at any point throughout the day. So it turned into that type of thing. And it's like, oh. Uh, let's just uh, snatch up Benny, and it's like, oh, he's like, you're going, like, Isaac's going to kill you. If he's not going to kill you, like, you know, go ahead. You might as well kill me. It's like, kill you? Nah, Benny. Why would we do that? You're going to be our inside guy. You're going to be the reason we get inside. So they end up surprising Isaac, and once again, showing you how, a little bit of a psychopath that Isaac is. He's super calm under pressure. He's like, oh. Segev, what are you doing here? Ron, okay. I see. He's like, why are you coming at him? He's like, w you know, stay away from my family. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, you kill my wife. And he's like, what? He's like, I had legit, I was like, okay, here we go. So Segev has, like I said, been under the impression this entire time that it's been about him. But in actuality, it has been about Danielle because he's like, yeah, those guys I hired, they were there to kill some random woman. Wait, you're telling me that woman was your wife? I was immediately like, wait, so I was like, so you hired these guys to kill some woman and it turns out to be Segev's wife who you hate Segev. I was like, oh, that's just, it's like, cause even he was like, it can't be a coincidence that you're living in the same city as the two people that killed my wife. It's like, no, of course not. I hired those guys for a job. He's like, I don't hire, I didn't like, it wasn't me that hired them specifically. I'm the middleman. A client asked me to find some people to do some business and I got them. He's like, I knew they were killed killing so because even saying like i you know basically saying like i'm the middleman i don't actually pick the targets someone hired me to hire someone else so i'm just the middleman in this even being super blunt about it he's like if i knew that was your wife if i really knew i would have had her killed in front of you once again he's like i didn't kill your wife but doubling down and be like i would have made a show of it i would i hate you that much i would have done that but i didn't know it's just you know it's like someone setting me up the perfect setup because i guess that was like that's the reason why they used specifically used uh, Isaac. Either he's like the only person that kind of fits that bill and has the discretion, but it seems like it's too on purpose for it to be Isaac, the person who definitely has history was Segev and his wife just happens to be killed. It's like the whole point was because they knew that Segev, considering his past, whoever it is, has to know about his past, would be able to be like, okay, Segev is going to know that. He's going to believe Isaac has something to do with this because of his past. So, at the very least, that's what it seems. So, now they're kind of at a loose end. Well, they had, like, initially, Segev is, like, about to choke him out. But then Ron stopped him. So, I was like, all right, call those two people here. So, they end up showing up, but then running. So, Ron chases after one dude. Segev goes after the other. But it's like, those guys don't really know either. They were just paid. Whoever it was was some cheap bastard. Because it's like, yeah, that hit only cost us 20000 Shouldn't say that to the man's wife, the, the uh, husband of the wife you killed. And so, uh, Segev snapped his neck. And initially, when he pushes him off and makes him fall, I'm like... Oh, are you making trying to make it look like a suicide? I'm like, I don't think that's going to coincide with the broken neck. Oh no, you just needed his needed a faster way to get his body down. Okay, drag it to the car. Oh, Ron actually killed the other guy because you could tell the moment like that guy had like beaten up Ron a little bit, and Ron looked up to him, pulled out his gun. I was like, oh, and Ron like I think lost it. I think there's some like PTSD there where like Ron just got like, legitimately snapped, killed the guy. And so when they were driving away, like, Ron's like, there, that, there's blood in that car. Like, how am I supposed to pick up my kids with this car? How am I to? And he's freaking out. And Segev kind of calms him down. And then Naomi, for whatever reason, like I said, there's some deep history there where, like, she's a willing to let Segev, like, come over. They're covered in blood and everything. And it's like, my husband's away in D.C. for now, so you have until, like, tomorrow to get the hell out of here. She's like, I don't even want to know the details. Just... But obviously because of this, they don't have any other leads to follow. These were their last leads, and they both kind of snapped and killed their only lead. So, obviously, Sega doesn't know where else to go because, you know, I'm not sure Isaac got away, but also it's like, yeah, Isaac knows you're in town now. So, for one, there's a good chance he can always come after you now. But two, he also will be a lot more prepared the next time you try to roll up on him. So, he's going to be a lot more on guard. Dude's got a lot of connections, even as, uh, as, um... Naomi said he's mobbed up, so... But uh, looking through a uh, the video from the wedding, Segev notices something. The dude that broke into his house at the end of episode one. 
oh, that dude I super killed? Yeah, it turns out he has a connection to Martin. Immediately runs over to the Wexler's place, but it's not them there. It's another family. And he's like, wait, what? Like, it's like the Airbnb. And it's like, so I don't know whether that's implying like that family airbnb it from the Wexler's or the very least like the Wexler's Airbnb, airbnb that house as well. So it wasn't even their house. So it's like, once again, just lies upon lies, as like Isaac had pointed out, like, who was your wife? And it's like, yeah, like if it wasn't about me, it turns out it had to be about Danielle. And now it's like the guy that met with Martin ended up being the guy that broke into our house. So what's going on here? The fact is they immediately moved out. So it's like, was everyone else that was there just, it makes you wonder, is there validity to like, were those really like um, Danny's like friends and stuff like that? Like oh, all these tons of friends or was that all like, was that entire like gathering a, a big lie? Because maybe none of the people there actually knew Danielle. I mean, because there was that one dude, it's like, oh yeah, like they knew each other since third or so grade. And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. To I mean, I guess it's like you, you want like one of our old friends to actually be there. Maybe there was some validity to that. It just seemed super, super suspicious. So we'll have to wait and see. But I'm like, so once again, going back to that like espionage, like, uh, a aspect of everything. I'm like, could they have been a part of this too? Like, could they actually not be actually related family? Could they be like handlers? Could they be people who are like her handler, for example? And it's like, cause it's something super, I, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting like them, like, like I said, initially when they got brought into the story, like I said, I was suspicious of Martin. I just wasn't expecting suspicion to be this high up in that regard. Cause it doesn't seem like maybe they were even, a real family that they might have been like this whole her identity and who she was might have been an entire lie and they just they fill the role of family members of like oh no no we're just loving family ha 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 but it's like maybe they were just as much you know now that Segev's in town like maybe they weren't expecting him to kind of see through their identity but it's like if they were handlers like why would they kill Danielle or or maybe maybe he's maybe it's slightly unrelated maybe that guy broke into the house because he was trying to get some sensitive information that um Danielle had gathered and it's like right we don't want anyone like her getting killed might have been like like I said maybe another agency or something or maybe she maybe a case she was involved in like I said, I'm throwing this all out there as if she is like a CIA agent or something like that, you know, with a deep, deep cover. And that basically the CIA was just trying to retrieve it. So that was an like agent that he ended up killing um, and they're just trying to cover their tracks because they, they're probably doing some stuff um, out of the country that they should be doing. Like maybe there's some illegal, um, like, um, illegal elements to that. I mean, I think it's mainly like they're not supposed to operate on uh, domestic soil, the CIA. So maybe there's something in that regard as well. I I don't know. It just makes it like, like I said, I think these might be two separate things that coincide. Like, because I was like, why would you hire someone to kill Danielle then? So, like I said, if this ends up being like some CIA thing, maybe it's completely unrelated. Maybe it's like a, nah, maybe there's like some shady stuff like business wise or something that that's connected to that Danielle was connected to that ended up getting her killed by Martin. But I don't know. Like I said, a lot of this is just pure speculation, me throwing stuff at the wall, seeing what ends up sticking, you know. I mean, that's the interesting thing about watching these things one episode at a time. My theories are constantly either growing, changing, or, or getting completely tossed out. But uh, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. Uh, Segev doesn't have many leads, but this does present him with a very interesting one. Now he has to bring, he has to question everything about Danielle. Um, so question is, what it what's, what is he going to end up discovering about not only Danielle, but the Wexers as well? We'll ultimately have to wait and see. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.